Hi everyone, I've had a few requests come in for this one now, so I thought I'd put a lesson together for you. Uh, we're in standard tuning, and as always, I'm going to base the majority of this lesson off of the recorded version, but whenever there's cool variations that they've done live or on alternate recordings that I've heard, I'll touch base on that to give you the option. And let's get right into it. I'll perform the main riff uh, with some scrolling tab for you, and we'll break it down. So only a couple of elements that we really have to talk about with this riff. It's highly repetitive. Probably the trickiest thing is the timing. Um, so what we do is we start with an A power chord to a B power chord, second fret of the A string. And then we're going to take that second fret and snap it off to the open A. Okay. And then we come down to an F sharp, second fret of the low string. And we're going to hit that twice, once with a palm mute, once without. And then to an open E palm mute, okay? And that, that, those three elements, the two hits on the F sharp with the open E, we're going to repeat that three times, so. And then to finish the riff off, we go back to that A, B with the pull off. Okay, so once through the riff nice and slow. You just play that riff a pile of times off the head of the track. And now the only other thing that I wanted to touch on before we move on to the next riff is that pull-off uh, that we have from the second fret to the open A. I did hear a recording where it was slightly different. Instead of just hitting that one note to the open A, you could hit that B power chord again and then snap off to both the A and the D. Okay, and goes by so fast, you, you know, you don't hear any dissonance. It just gives it a, a bigger sound. It sounds pretty cool. So... And it gives the riff a different feel when you do that. So there's something you might want to experiment with. It's kind of cool. Now, I'll just play that, slow it down for you a couple of times through, and we'll move on to the next riff. Pre-chorus, pretty simple. We're just ringing power chords for complete measures. Uh, we start with the F sharp on the second fret of our low string. Up to the fifth fret of A, which is a D power chord. Then up a whole step to E on the seventh fret. And when you hit that, you can also include the low E string underneath that. Make it a little bit fuller. And then back to an F sharp power chord. Okay, and then the second half, the, for our second four measures, we start on that F sharp again. And then the D again. E power chord, uh, open E. Back to the F sharp. Okay, so our complete progression. Put a little slide in there. Okay, and then we're going to get into the chorus, but let's just talk about a couple of little uh, variations in that. Uh, the first thing, the second chorus, they, the first chorus they play how I just showed you, but the second chorus, they hit an F sharp to the D, up to that E, and then instead of dropping back down to the low one, they go up another whole step to the ninth fret of that A string and hit an F sharp up there starting the second half of the chorus on that low F sharp. So they've just altered that one chord. Probably just to kind of provide a little bit of variation because we've got two full complete measures of F sharp, right? 
So that brings me to another little variation. I heard this on a, another recording that's bouncing around out there. Um, instead of just having two measures of that F sharp, we're gonna put in a quick little. Okay, there's a couple of E palm mutes there. So ring the F sharp. Now there's a little upstroke with some, just uh, snag the open strings on the bottom. And then three palm mutes on the E to the second measure of that F sharp. So in context for you, it's gonna go like this. Okay, so there's a little variation, you know, you can alter it a little bit, just have some fun with it. There's a couple of variations there for you. Um, now we're gonna get into the chorus riff and we do that by chugging on an F sharp fourth fret of D, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna give you a couple of options of playing this, but on the recording, I'm pretty sure that there's a pull off. You can hear this, a brief open E where they hit this and then. Okay, so there's a brief little open E as they're transitioning. So I think that's why we're hearing the open E because they're pulling off and hitting that with their first finger. Uh, live, I've seen them just hop their pinky or third finger up there even though. Right, so you could do it both ways. But like I said, on the recording, I'm pretty sure due to me hearing that open E pull off briefly, they're probably hopping up with their first finger. Another way that's pretty cool of getting that F sharp there on the, uh, the that pitch is to actually play it on the ninth fret of the A string. Um, So you could do that too. I'm pretty sure that I've heard recordings with them experimenting with that. So there's a, you know, a couple of different options for you to get that note. Um, so what we're gonna do, hit that eight times, three E and a, four E and a, and then we're into our chorus riff. Okay, uh, so basically what the chorus riff is, is start on the seventh fret of the D string. Okay, and we're gonna hit that just 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a, then pull off to the fifth fret, come down to the A string, seven, five, five, seven, and then bar the fifth fret on the D and the G. Okay, and then we play that three times. The first time though, there's a little hammer there from five to seven. And then the third, or and then the second and third times is not there. It's just directly to that seventh fret, right? So there's that little nuance there. The fourth time, we have a slightly different ending. So we're going to start on that seventh fret, and then one E and a two E and. So just notice how that last hit is an open A string. Then put a palm mute on, third fret G, two hits, up to the fifth fret A, two hits. Okay, so there's that fourth rotation of that riff. Okay, so there's the pre-chorus and the chorus. I'll put it together for you nice and slow with some scrolling tab, and here we go. Okay, so now we've talked about the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus, and after the first chorus, we repeat all that for another verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. And then we get into a new section of the song. Okay, where we have a pretty repetitious figure that goes through a couple of transpositions around the neck. So I'll perform the first little bit of that, and then we will talk about how they end this section in harmony after we break down just exactly what this riff is. So here we go. So 
So as you can see, we're really just playing the same riff over and over and just transposing it to different starting notes on the fretboard. Um, but really, we only have four notes and they repeat each time. So we start on the second fret of the low string and then the open A and then the second fret pulling back off to the open A. And that's it, just those four notes and then we repeat them with a slightly different timing for the second half of the measure. And that's it. Okay, and there's that one palm mute in that measure too. The second time that we come back to the lowest note, we palm mute that. Okay, now, like I mentioned, it's in seven, eight time. So the easiest way of getting the feel of that is to count in seven. One, two, and three, four, and five, six, seven. One, two, and three, four, and five, six, seven. Okay, that's gonna be the easiest way of really internalizing the feel of that and getting it up to speed. Okay, so we play it four times, starting on that second fret, and then we just move the figure up, play it four times, starting on the fourth fret of the low string. So now we're gonna have the fourth fret of the low string and frets two and four on the A string. Play it four times there. And then just move it up one more fret to the starting on the fifth fret. Play it four times there. Move it up one more time to the seventh fret of the low string, all right, and just play it four times there. So that's a total of 16 times through that rhythmic figure now, four times at each starting point. So just because it's a little tricky timing there, you know, with the seven, eight going on, I'll play it with some scrolling tab for you, slow down a little bit, uh, and then we'll talk about how they wrap it up with some harmony. Now let's check out what the harmonies are to wrap this up. Okay, so wrapping this section up, we have a quick little harmony, and we're still playing the same rhythmic figure. Let's talk about the lower harmony first, and we go back to two repetitions starting on the fifth fret of the low string. Now we flip into 4-4 four, four time and we're just taking the rhythm of the first two beats and transposing that around. So we go back down to the fifth fret and just play the first two beats. Quickly shift up to the seventh fret, play that first two beats again. Okay, so like I said, now we're in 4-4 four, four time, so we've got two beats and two beats there. Right, now we're gonna jump up to the ninth fret of the A string and play that two beats come down to the seventh fret of the A string, fifth fret of the A string. Now we're gonna wrap it up with some power chord stabs. Okay, third fret on the A string, C, down to the third fret on the low string, G, up to the fifth fret, A, up to the seventh fret, B. Okay? And then we repeat G, A, B. Okay? Uh, so that's the lower harmony. And now the higher harmony guitar uh, just copies the same movement, but we're just harmonizing in fifths, so we're a fifth higher. So that part started with the lower guitar on the fifth fret of the low string, so we're going to start a fifth higher on the seventh fret of the A string, so we play that twice. 
right? And then the lower guitar moved up to the 7th fret, so we're going to move up to the ninth fret on the A string. And then we flip into our 4-4 time and just, again, copy that same movement that the lower guitar did, just a fifth higher. So come back down to the 7th fret on the A string, up to the 9th fret on the A string. Going to skip up to the 11th fret on the D string, then down to the 9th fret on the D string, 7th fret on the D string. Jump down and copy the same power chord movement that the lower guitar did. Okay, so I'll just play that higher harmony uh, slowed down the whole way through just so that you've got that. Here we go with that. And then we get into the next riff that sounds like this. So this is a cool lick and it always reminds me of Whiplash because Whiplash has kind of the same thing going on. All right, he's got that. So this is, it starts off the same. Got that same figure. So what we're doing is pulling off from nine to seven on the A string, down to nine on the E string, and then bar the A string and the D string at the seventh fret. And then we're gonna palm mute the ninth fret on the A string. And we just play that three times. And then we tack on three power chord stabs. And that's D on the fifth fret of the A string, A on the fifth fret of the E string, and then E seventh fret of the A string. Okay, so that's our riff. Um, and we just play that, I think it's eight times in total. Um, so I'll just play it a couple of times nice and slow for you with some scrolling tab. And there is another guitar underneath that main one that we hear. And that just starts off the very first rotation. We just go. And then we join at the end for the power chord stab. So all that is an F sharp stab on the second fret. We join those power chords. Right. Okay, so the second, third, and fourth rotations, we do a triplet up on this F sharp on the ninth fret of the A string. Right? Um, so it's just a one triplet, two. You hit that four times in total. And then you slide it. Um, and then you just join with those power chord stabs. And then after the four rotations, the two guitars come together and play the same riff four more times before the bridge section, which goes like this. So starting the bridge off by sliding a power chord shape up the two bottom strings, we're starting on the second fret, F sharp. Go up to the fifth fret, A. Seventh fret, B. Then we just have some power chord stabs here. Okay, that's the, jumping up to the A string, five, seven, five, which is D, E, D. Okay, now the probably the trickiest part here, jumping back to our starting chord, that F sharp from those stabs. Okay, got to have a nice smooth hop there. And then we just play the same thing again. Um, we basically play the same thing four times, uh, except for the second time, instead of doing those stabs up there, we're going to go to an E palm mute and just hit an E power chord, you know, palm mute it three times. Uh, and so we're just substituting that the one time. Um, so nice and slow for you, those lines are going to go like this.
And then we get into... Okay, so we're hitting the fourth fret power chord on the A string now, which is C sharp. And we're gonna hit that, and then palm mute just the fourth fret, and we're gonna do that six times in total. So it's one, enda, two, E, enda. And then repeat those power chords, D, E, D. Then do the whole thing over. Okay, then we have this. And all that is, is a series of power chords all rooted along the A string on the fourth, fifth, seventh, and eighth frets. And in between each one, we're just doing a random slide on the low string for that slide effect, right? So I've got it notated as starting on the first fret in the tab, but that's just because I kind of had to start somewhere, right? It doesn't really matter. Just grab that low string anywhere and slide up. So. Then we have this funny little seven, eight measure. Right, and that's easy enough to pull off. Just put a palm mute on all of this. Nine and seven on the A string. And then nine, eight, seven, five on E. Okay, and the timing, you know, if you wanted to count that out in, in seven, eight, it gets a little bit tricky because it's triplets. I've also seen it tabbed out in three, four, but then you have to kind of slow the tempo down. So, I mean, it's easy enough, just do this. All right, it's easy enough to feel. I wouldn't get too bogged down in counting that out or anything. Okay, so there's the whole bridge section and it all repeats again the whole way through, but I'll just play it through once slow for you with some scrolling tab. Okay, now after the bridge, the next part that we have to talk about is the rhythm under the solo. And that's all elements that we've already talked about. But let's just talk about how they get into the solo because there's a little variation on the main riff. So we have that main riff four times right before the solo. But the fourth time, just right before the solo, it goes. Okay, and then they get into the solo. So all of that is, there's just one measure different, uh, and we're going up to the ninth fret on the A string. And then, this is actually done in harmony on the album, but it's easy enough to play it with one guitar. But you're gonna hit the ninth fret on the A string four times, and then hit the seventh fret on the D string at the same time. So that's a minor third dyad, right? Okay, and then go to an F sharp, second fret there with three E power chord palm mutes. And then we're just into the main riff. And the solo starts. Okay, so I'll just play that nice and slow for you uh, with that extra ending and here we go. And then we're into the solo, like I said. And the solo is just eight repetitions of the main riff followed by a complete playthrough of the whole bridge section, right? So that's the whole. That whole thing, all the way up to that measure of seven, eight. And then back into the main riff and we're into the outro of the song. Okay, so that's what's going on underneath the solo. Let's talk about the main solo itself. I'll give it a quick playthrough and then we'll break it down.
So the solo has a lot of 17th fret bends, like a lot of them. We're going to start with that 17th fret on the B string, bend it three times. And you want to cut those short. And then we're going to do it another three times, but we're going to do it super quick bend um, and then release to the 14th fret. Do that three times and then end with one more bend, okay? And then what we want to do, we have a quick little 17, 16, 14 as we go bend the 17th fret on the high string. And we want to bend that 17th fret on the high string three times. And it seems to me like he, he was trying to build it a little bit each time going slightly higher. Um, but it's not a lot higher every time. So... Right? Just maybe start with a whole step bend. Go a little bit higher and a little bit higher again. Just to build that, you know, that excitement. And then we're going to go 14, 17 to 14. Okay, so so far we've got this. Okay, now we get into this repeating thing. Okay, and this is typical Kirk Hammett lick, so if you've learned any other Metallica solos, this probably isn't very new for you. But we're going to start a little pickup note here, 14th fret on the high string, and then 17 to 14 pull off, down to the B string 17, back up to the high string 14, and bend the B string 17 again. Okay, and we're going to do that four times. A one E and a two, a three E and a four, a one E and a two, a three E and a four. Then we get into another little repeating thing. Okay, and then that's just 17, 16, 14, really rapid pull off along the high string down to the B string, back up to the high string, and do that four times. And then we get into... And that's all just 14 on the high string, and bending 17 on B. Okay, uh, so I'll just put those two measures together. And then we get into an extended run that goes on for a little bit. So I'll just slow the whole thing down and play it for you slow before we break it down. Okay, so firmly rooted in the pentatonic bass, you know, home pattern one there on the 14th fret because we're in F sharp minor here. Um, so, the first two beats of that lick. Okay, 17 to 14 pull off on the high string, down to the B, up to the E, then 17 14 on the two high strings. Then we have this. Okay, for our second two beats of that first measure. And that is coming down to the G string, bend 16, back up to the B string. G string, 16 to 14 pull off. Now, here's a little trick with this lick. 16 on D, and roll your third finger to get 16 on G. Okay, so our first measure. Okay, now our first two beats of our second measure. Okay, so that's double pick 14 on the G string. Now, we want to get a little hammer pull in there as well from 14 to 16. Come down to the D string, 16, 14. Then 16 on A, back up to 14 on the D string. Okay, so our first two beats. Now we have this. And that's just 16, 14 on the D string. A, 16, 15, 14 to 12. And then then little 14 to 12 pull off. So let's put our first two measures together of that lick. Goes like this. And to finish this off. Okay, build back up into our pentatonic pattern. 14 on the low string. Back up to A, 12, 14, slide to 16. 
Now, little funky rhythm that we got going on here. We bar the 14th fret on D and G and we go down up. And then you can hit the strings as we get every up stroke from there. It's like this. Okay, so it's two E and a, three E and a, four E and. Okay, so happens really fast. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. You just fill up that, you know, kind of just strumming 16th notes at that point, right? And then you want to borrow the 16th frets on D and G. Pull them down towards the floor a little bit and do that twice. And then hit those 16th frets one more time to the 14th fret of G and then bend that a little bit too. 16 of D. Okay, so there's that whole big long lick. I'll put it all together for you. Okay, next thing that we do, we fall down, bend the fourth fret of the G string, and then you're just gonna trem pick it for approximately six beats while you release it. And you can put a slight palm mute on it too. Okay, so now you get out of that by pulling off the second fret, down to the fourth on D, back to the second fret on G. Okay? Um, now, we're just going to create noise here. What we're doing is take your first and third finger, do random pull-offs on the G string, doesn't matter what frets you're hitting, climb the G string as you're just put it, pulling the bar back and forth. Okay, that's all you're doing is just creating some noise there, and you're going to do that for approximately another six beats, right? Now, on the recording, we get out of that... Right? There's a little, it's unmistakable on the recording that the, these pitches are being hit. Okay, so what that is, is the 12th fret on B, and you're going to hit that four times. Hammer to 14 with an open B. But, you know, I doubt that that was composed. That was probably just him making noise and it just happened to come out that way, right? But, you know, just because it is unmistakable on the recording, thought I'd show it to you there. But really, you're just filling up a couple of measures with whammy bar noise there. Okay, and then what you want to do is come out of that with this pattern, and we're going to repeat this four times too. Okay, so we're going to start 19 to 14 on the high string pull off, 17 on the B string. And those are our three notes. We're just going to do that twice. And then 19 to 14 pull off and stop there. That's our pattern. Okay, and then we move down 17, 14 on the high string to the 15th fret on B. And we just do the same pattern. Move your first finger down to the 12th fret. So we're going to have 17 and 12 with 15 on the B string and the same pattern. Okay, so that's the pull-off part. Now we have a little scale run. 15, 14, 12 on the E and the B string. Now you're gonna hit 14 on the G string and slide up to 16 as we get into position for the repeat. And just go through it again. Okay, so that fourth time we have a slightly different ending. We go 15 to 12, pull off on the high string, bend 15 on the B string, back up to the high string, 15 to 12 on the B string, and then 17th fret bend on the B string. Okay, and then, so, you know, more patterns that we've already encountered in this solo. So 14 and 17 on the high string with 17 on the B string. Okay. And you can bend those. If you can get a little inflection on all of those 17th frets on the B string, you can nudge them a little bit. On the recording, it sounds like they're nudged slightly, but definitely not like a 
a whole step every time, right? Because they're going by so fast. But if you can get a little nudge on them, that's good too. Okay, then we have this. Okay, so we double pick 14. Then a little pull off thing down the high string. 19 to 14, 17 to 14, and 16 to 14. Then down to 17, bouncing back and forth between that 17 and 14 again on the two high strings. Okay, and then we're going to get into the last little bit of the solo. Okay, and on the recording, the timing seems to be a little bit erratic. Um, you know, it's so I, I think that it was a very improvised part how he wrapped this up. So you don't need to copy these rhythms exactly. Um, but, you know, basically all that he's doing is just doing unison bends up uh, the E and the B string. Uh, so what we've got is we start with the 17 and 14. Then we move up to 18 and 15. And then we move up to 20 and 17. And then 21 and 18. And with a 22nd fret bend on that high string and shake the bar and drop it. Um, and there you go, there's a solo. So I'll perform the whole thing nice and slow with some scrolling tab and here we go. Last thing we have to talk about is the outro and I'll give it a quick performance just because there are two guitars needed to create the outro effect the way they've got it on the record. So here it is. Okay, so the outro, like I said, two guitar parts uh, in this. The lower guitar part that is, you know, a little bit harder to hear in the mix is just uh, chugging all on the F sharp, except for a couple of brief hits at the very end of the uh, rotation on an E power chord. So it's going. Okay, it does that four times, and then it's just fading out with an F sharp over and over and over. Okay, and then layered on top of that guitar is the other one. Which is basically just a variation of the main riff. So it's also hitting the F sharp. And then just going up to the A, B, pull off like we had in the main riff. And then repeating that. Okay, plays that four times and then both guitars just come together. And just hit on an F sharp uh, repeatedly and until it fades out. And that's the outro. So there's the complete track, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning it. It was a lot of fun to put this together. There's a lot of cool riffs in here. Hopefully it keeps you busy and it answered all the questions that you had. I'll see you next time.